Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning to all the rest of you who didn't hear me say good morning. <laughs> Gosh, this congregation loves one another. They yak and they yak and they yak. Well, it's good to have you all here this morning. The sun's shining. God is on the throne. And uh, we are blessed people. There's no doubt about it. Folks, stand up and sing with us. Let's praise the Lord this morning. Father God, as we come before you this morning, Father, we acknowledge, first of all, that you are the Lord God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and that you loved us. Oh, Father, thank you. And Father, we do confess this day with our mouth who you are. And Father, I thank you. For my brothers and sisters, both here in this sanctuary and at home, that, Father, that we as the body of Christ can gather together and we can worship you. And, Father, we thank you and praise you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It is great to see everyone this morning. Uh, let's start off by saying good morning. Good morning. It is a great morning, isn't it? It really is. Look, just take a second, look around. 
And look at look at look at all these people that we get to share Sunday morning with as we worship together. Garrett, are you smiling? <laughs> Boy, you, you didn't look like you had a smile on your face. You looked like I can't believe Mom made me get up this early. Anyway, it is great to be together in the in the house of the Lord. Uh, there's an offering plate up in the front, and there's one in the back to my right. And welcome to the one that just showed up at 9.05. <coughs> Debbie, Debbie thought we had a 9.05 shirt. It is great to see you this morning, Debbie. I know it. I know it. I know it. Anyway, let's meet and greet this morning. first sang that song in the back seat of a 1960 Valiant, going somewhere with my, my aunts on either side, and, and, and both of them were praying, my God, I hope he learns how to sing sometime. <laughs> but that was one of those songs that we just wore it out. I mean, it is so good to, to look back and, and see families influence in a good way. They, they were good people, and, and they prayed for me all the time, and I could, I could feel it, although I didn't even understand it. Um, I've had a million things to think about this last week. It's like uh, the Christian radio station 101.5 has just been, been saying constantly, Kurt, you should talk about this, or maybe that, or how about this, or how about that. And uh, my mind is just racing. But I, I do want to tell you a story about something that happened here several years ago. Um, we had been on a weekend that Gene talks about called the Walk to Emmaus. I, I worked the team. So did another guy, and we had a brand new guy go along. And we were talking about how good God is. Because even though I've been singing for a long time, I'm not always a choir boy. You know what I'm saying? I, I've got things to be embarrassed about, things to apologize for, and I think we all do. 
And I was talking to the veteran and the newbie, and I said, man, isn't it neat to be forgiven? And uh, this, the new guy just kind of stared at me, and his wife walked up and said, my husband's not like you. He, he, he doesn't act up. He doesn't, he's not the bad guy. And I thought, wow, I, I wish I could just, I wish I could just stifle her right at that second, you know, in a good way, because the whole point is not to compare me and Andy and Bart and Gene. The whole point is to compare ourselves with Christ and Amen. say, we have got so far to go. And then humbly take the first step and start being like Jesus. Um, this next song is all about Jesus. Sing out, sing loud and proud, okay? next song that we're going to do the last one was beautiful because I've sung it my whole life um, this next one came out just a few years ago uh, in radio terms it's old but it may be 10 years old or something <laughs> to me it's still new but man this song that we're going to try to do well for you right now you're going to love it Oh 
You ever think about heaven and what we're going to be doing in heaven? You ever, you ever think about that? One of the things that the scripture teaches us is that we're going to be singing praises. <laughs> I, 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 I praise God for... That idea that in heaven we're just going to be in the presence of Jesus Christ and we're just going to pure worship, praise, just just singing. Oh, Father God, Lord, we thank you. So we come before God this morning in prayer. Uh, 
the list just continues to grow and grow and grow. But it's, it's all good because God is able. We do ask uh, your prayers. Uh, there is a, a Trace Diaz three-day weekend going on. Uh, we have a couple of guys from this church that are out there. Uh, as you can tell, Rick is one of those that is, that is out there. Rick and another gentleman are leading music on that weekend. Uh, I ask that you pray for those men that are going through that weekend. A uh, young man in this church who normally, uh, he, he attends between the 9 and the 1030 service, Cameron. And he has COVID, and uh, he's concerned about his wife and two little children. Ask your prayers for Cameron. Uh, Brian Hicks has been moved up to Chicago, uh, which is a praise God. Ask that you continue to, to lift uh, Brian up in your prayers. Uh, Connie Elmire, maybe's grandson Zane, uh, is in a hospital in Virginia. And Pappy texted me this morning. They are on their way uh, to the hospital in Virginia. Ask your prayers for Zane Elmire. I, I think he's 10 years old, and he's had to have two, two. He's had to have two surgeries in the last week and a half. And I ask your prayers uh, for Zane. Uh, ask your prayers this morning for Joyce Schmidt, for Jana Hughes. Um, Greg Buchanan, ask your continued prayers for Matt and Kim Cameron and their kids. <clears throat> ask your prayers for the family of David Frankenberger, for the family of Linda Weber, for the family of Valerie Hunsaker, for the family of Carl Battiger, and also for the family of J.R. Uh, Franz, that's Robert's nephew. So we come before God today. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes it seems as if things are just going along great and it's like, I don't have any concerns. And then there's other times when uh, there's just so many concerns. But you know, uh, one, one thing that, that I have learned over the years is we tend to cry out to God when we are in desperate need. There are times when, and I'm not talking about any of you, I'm talking about other people, who uh, sometimes they kind of forget, forget God when things are going good. They're like, I, I don't even think about God. Things are going great. There's an old saying that I learned a long time ago uh, about praying for those who realize that they need God. And also to pray for those that have an even greater need. And that's those who don't even know that they need God. If you have a prayer concern today, if you'll lift it up to the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, it is so good to come before you today. Father, on this bright, sunny morning, the crisp air, Father, the seasons are changing, and yet, Father, you do not. You do not. Father, I thank you for who you are, and I thank you that you do not change. And in this world that is changing quicker and quicker, Father, we, we confess today that you do not change. You are constant. And Father, thank you for that. And Lord, as we read through the Old Testament and we read of your people. And as they went through life, <clears throat> there were times when they had struggles and they cried out to you. And Father, we're no different. 
we cry out to you. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your undivided attention. Father, you are so intimately wrapped up in our lives, which is so hard for us to understand, but you are. Father, you have a desire for us to fellowship with you. And Father, we thank you for that. Lord, we do lift up our loved ones to you. Father, we ask for your divine intervention. Father, we lift up those in need. We lift up those with the even greater need of not knowing that they are in need. Father, we pray for healing of of the body and of the mind and of the soul. Father, we, we lift up to you broken relationships. And Father, we pray that those relationships are healed. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. Oh, Father, you're so good that you have blessed us with each other that we can journey together on this journey of faith. Father, I thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name. I was going through Galatians 5, 22 and 23 the other day. And Galatians 5, 22 and 23 are the fruits of the Spirit. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. I was going through these fruits of the Spirit, and as I was thinking about these fruits of the Spirit, and I was doing it myself, self-assessment, I realized that the one that, the one probably that, in, in my own opinion, at least this is what I was thinking the other day, the one that I lack the most, and I invite you to do this, I just spend time thinking about the fruits of the Spirit. Doing a self-assessment. The one that, that I couldn't get out of my mind was gentleness. Gentleness. I just, I kept looking at these others and I kept coming back to gentleness. And so I had to ask myself, am I a gentle person? Am I a gentle person? On Friday, I had the privilege of having lunch with three other pastors, uh, three other men that I respect. And one of them, as we were having lunch together, one of them looked at me and he said, what, what are you preaching on this Sunday? And I said, well, I said, I, I'm preaching on fruit of the Spirit. I said, I'm preaching on gentleness. And he said, why did you pick gentleness? I said, because that's one I feel like I'm lacking the most. And one of the other pastors looked at me and he said, are you going to confess that to your congregation? I said, I sure am. I said, sure. The most elder of the three pastors I was having lunch with 
He said, you know, in, in, in thinking about gentleness, he said, the thing that, that helps me is when I consider that trait in someone else. He said, when I think about when someone else has shown gentleness toward me, when I have a situation with somebody and I'm kind of expecting them to be all worked up and, and instead they treat me with gentleness. He said, that, that has had the greatest impact upon me. And I got to thinking about different times in my life when someone has shown gentleness toward me and maybe when I least deserved a gentle response. And there were several that, that came to my mind. Times when I did something that probably <laughs> by all accounts would have uh, merited a very angry response. I remember one time when <clears throat> I think I was 17 years old. I'd gone to a, a party at a young lady's house and a uh, whole group of uh, kids in the basement of this house and I decided to leave a little early and I went out to the driveway and I got in my old beat up vehicle. I don't know what I was driving at the time but I guarantee you it was an old beat up junker. And as I was backing out of this person's driveway I hit a car, and I got out of, out of my vehicle, and I looked, and the young lady whose house we were at, I hit her dad's car. And I looked around, nobody saw it. I can't do that, I can't do that. I've got to go in and confess. I've got, I've, I've got to go tell this guy that I hit his car. And I'm thinking, man, he is going to be hot. He's going to be angry. He's going to, and this is going to cost me a whole lot of money that I don't have. Oh, man. So I go back into the house. <clears throat> and I went upstairs and I said to the gentleman, sir, I need you to come outside. I said, I was backing out of the driveway and I hit your car. And he said, well, how bad is it? I said, well, on your car. He said, I'm not worried about my car. What about your car? I said, well, you can't even tell it on my car with all the other. <laughs> he said, I'm not worried about my car. He said, thank you for coming in and telling me. And I was just like, unbelievable. Wow, I, I, I was just blown away with the gentleness that he treated me. And I have thought about that over the years when different things have happened. And, you know, you start to react a certain way, and I, and I, I remember that. And so when this pastor on Friday afternoon said to me, and to the, the other three, he said, think about a time when someone has been gentle towards you. What is gentleness? What is gentleness? One definition of gentleness is power under control. Power under control. Something else that I came across about gentleness is gentleness is not weakness. Now, as I stand here today, I can tell you that, and, and ladies, I, I, I think it's true for ladies, but I, I, I can almost 100% assure you that it's, it's true for most men. When we think about being gentle, sometimes that comes across this idea of being weak. 
And that's not what it is. Sometimes it takes more strength to be gentle. Sometimes it takes more strength to be gentle. And I love this definition of gentleness. Power under control. Power under control. A friend of mine that I met when I was still in high school, <clears throat> man that, that Bart has gotten to know and, and love and respect, his name is Roger Mason. And Roger Mason is just a couple years older than I am. Uh, he was a football player. He was a power lifter. Um, several years in a row, uh, he earned the title of the strongest man in the state of Indiana. Uh, extremely powerful man. Roger started the Youth Care Center, the, the uh, juvenile lockup facility here in Evansville. Uh, that was his idea. That was his vision. And he went before Judge Lensing and he started the Youth Care Center. Dealing with children 13 to 17 that get in trouble with the law, and rather than putting those, at that time, just young men, rather than putting them into the adult jail here in Vandenberg County, which is not a good situation, they developed a lockup facility for those youth. And I worked there uh, with Roger for a couple of summers, and I would see a young man become extremely agitated, worked up. Uh, you know, they're, they're dealing with uh, emotional issues. Many of them had extremely violent behavior. And I would see a young man that would get so worked up that the normal staff could not deal with that young man. And they would take that young man into Roger's office. Now, here's the strongest man in the state of Indiana sitting behind this desk. And this violent, angry teenager marched into his office. And I would sit there and I would watch Roger so gently talk to that young man. So gently confront the disruptive behavior, so gentle. And I would sit there sometimes and I would just be amazed. And I would be thinking to myself, boy, if that was me, I'd be firing on that kid. If that was me, I'd... And I'd watch this man with this gentle nature. Not ignoring the behavior. I mean, he would confront that behavior. But he had such a gentle spirit about him. And I, I, I praise God for that example. Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. Jesus is preaching. And if you ever want to hear a good sermon, you ought, you ought to read a, a message from Jesus. Uh, it, it's, it, I guarantee you it's the best message you'll ever hear. Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. Jesus is teaching. And he says, blessed are the gentle. Some versions will put in the word meek. And if you go back into the, into the Greek, it's, it's the same word. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Do you know blessed people? Do you know gentle people? Do you know people who have a gentle disposition? They're blessed. Blessed. Blessed are the gentle. Blessed are the gentle. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Jesus says, now and this is Jesus talking about himself. Now keep in mind, who Jesus was. Jesus is the one that created everything. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, 
and the word was God. And all things came into being through him. That's Jesus. But in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, Jesus, talking about himself, says, For I am gentle and humble in heart. Now, picture Jesus for a second. As you look at these windows, every Wednesday morning I have the privilege of talking to our 67 of our preschool children about Jesus. And I, I tell you one of the funny things, one of the little kids, instead of calling me uh, Pastor Gene, calls me Master Gene. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> and some, one of the teachers said, we need to get that fixed. I said, there's nothing to get fixed. <laughs> That's the way it ought to be. Picture Jesus, look, look at Jesus in these windows. Look at Jesus in these windows. What's the image that's portrayed? In every one of these windows, isn't he gentle? He's gentle. <laughs> this window up here, Jesus is holding a sheep. <laughs> wow. Here Jesus is holding a child. Jesus. Revelation 3.20. What's it say? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Why would Jesus knock? It's his house. <laughs> he, that's how Jesus described himself. He said, I am gentle and humble in heart. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. The Apostle Paul is talking about the church at Galatia, and he's talking about someone who has sinned. And in Galatians 6, 1, Paul says, Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. So if you see me doing something wrong, what should you do? Reach out. Reach out. Beat me up? No. no. Should you ignore my wrong behavior? No, you should not ignore me. Restore me in a spirit of gentleness. That's, that's for each one of us. We are to restore someone in a spirit of gentleness. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. The Apostle Paul says to walk with gentleness. That's, that's an image that has stuck with me. To walk with gentleness. To walk with gentleness. Susie's mother, for the last couple months, has been using a cane. And she will sit down and she'll set her cane down. And then she'll get up and she'll start to take a couple of walks. And what will Susie say to her? Mom, where's your cane? Where's your cane? Well, I don't need it. Mom, where's your cane? Use your cane. We need that reminder so that wherever we walk, what do we take with us? Gentleness. Take gentleness with you. When I, before I leave the house... Susie kind of laughs about this, but, you know, it's, we get ready to go somewhere. You ready to go? And it's real simple. I check this pocket, this pocket, this pocket, this pocket. Make sure I got everything. Got my keys, my phone, my wallet, my handkerchief. Get, you ready to go? Yep, ready to go. 
You guys ever do that? You got to check, make sure you got everything. The Methodist Macarena. <laughs> uh, there's a story about, I, I'll, I'll say that story for another time, but yeah. <laughs> keys, keys, phone, wallet, handkerchief. I mean, it's, yep, ready to go. What if we did that with gentleness? You ready to go? Keys, phone, Wallet, handkerchief, gentleness. Let's go. I got my gentleness with me. Now you might say, well, that's kind of silly. But you know what? That kind of, a, of an image sticks with, sticks with us. Let's take gentleness with us. Because let me ask you, do we have gentleness within our nature? No, I don't believe we're born with it. That's why it is a fruit of the Spirit. Without the Spirit, we don't have the fruit. You with me? We don't have oranges growing in our house, in our yard. Why? We don't have an orange tree. You don't have an orange tree, you're not going to have oranges. If you don't have the Spirit, how can you have the fruit of the Spirit? So maybe we need to ask God to fill us with His Spirit. And then remember to take gentleness with us wherever we go. Philippians chapter 4 verse 5 says, let your gentle spirit be known to all. If I were to ask your friends right now about you, would they say you have a gentle spirit? Would they say you have a gentle spirit? Not on Mondays. Not on Mondays? <laughs> if you asked people that know me, would they say that I have a gentle spirit? Depends on who you ask. Depends on who you ask. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 says, But we proved to be gentle among you as a nursing mother tenderly cares for her own children. Picture a young mother <coughs> tenderly caring for her baby. How tender they are. That's how we are to treat one another. Just like a mother treats her newborn baby. If I had a newborn grandchild in my arms and I was treating that newborn grandchild roughly, would you say something to me? <laughs> I guarantee you, you would. And you should, right? <laughs> I mean, you'd be all over me. What if I treat <coughs> Trina roughly? <laughs> what if I treat Kurt roughly? Should you all say something to me? I hope so. Restore such a one with gentleness. Restore such a one with gentleness. And finally, I'm going to close with Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 10 and 11. I love this image of God. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 10 and 11. Behold, the Lord God will come with might, with his arm ruling for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he will tend his flock. In his arm, 
he will gather the lambs and carry them in his bosom. He will gently lead the nursing lambs. You see the two different images there? In verse 10, it says, Behold, the Lord God will come with might. I picture, I picture God with his army. God will come with his might. And what's verse 11 say? Like a shepherd, in his arm he will gather the lambs. He will carry them in his bosom. He will gently lead. I love that double-sided image of God. He's strong. He's powerful. And yet, he is gentle. Gentleness is power under control. Don't ever think that being gentle means you're weak. No. Gentleness does not mean that we give in to wrong. Gentleness does not mean that we just go along with the flow. Gentleness does not mean that we're unwilling to confront sin. Gentleness is power under control. I think it takes more strength to be gentle than it does to be violent. So let me encourage you today, be strong. Be strong. And in your strength, be gentle. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you this morning for your word. Lord, I thank you. Father, I thank you for Galatians 5, and 23, the fruits of the Spirit. Lord, I thank you that you spoke to me this week about gentleness. And Lord, I do pray that you... Father, I pray on a personal level, that you fill me more with your spirit, that I would be more gentle. And Father, for each and every person that is here today, Father, I pray that you also would fill them with your spirit, that the fruit of the spirit would be more evident in their lives. Father, for all of us, help us to be strong, so strong that we are willing to be gentle. Oh, Father, I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Please stand. I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. Straight is the 
picture Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's with the 12. The soldiers arrive. What could Jesus have done? Whatever he wanted. He could have called, the scripture says, 72,000 angels from heaven. And those human soldiers wouldn't have stood a chance. But what did Jesus do? Take me. And when Peter took that sword and cut off that man's ear, Jesus could have looked at Simon Peter and said, wish you had a better aim. <laughs> he didn't do that. Jesus reached out and healed that man. He had all the power in the world. And yet, he was as gentle as a lamb. Father God, I pray your blessings upon your people today. Father, bless us with the filling of your Holy Spirit that the fruit of the Spirit will be more evident in our lives. Father, I pray your blessing upon your people today. In Jesus' name, amen.